What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC video. Today we have some news. It's it's either good news or bad news depending on your perspective. I find it to be very neutral, but it is bad in one sense. Um, I was wrong. So the official Series 2 rule set has been announced. It begins in February and it runs until March 31st. And this rule set did not introduce Cinderace and Charizard like we were expecting, but rather it just cut to the chase. It said, okay, Paradox Mons are in, which confuses me because that would imply if we're going by like, you know, the updates are, you know, Paradox Mons and um, Ruination Mons are banned and then they let Paradox in and then they let Ruination in and then the Pokemon Home update. If they're all two months long and Worlds is in August, that means that we're probably getting DLC before Worlds, which is really weird to think about uh, because it's a huge game changer. But that's besides the point. We have Paradox Mons in, and I want to talk about each one of them and what they mean for the metagame. I probably won't get into depth with every single one because there are a lot of them that I genuinely think aren't that good, but I'll at least throw an idea out there for each one, all right? So yeah, I guess before we start, if you guys enjoy this and play on time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications because I bring you daily competitive Pokemon content, uh, and answer my comment question of the day, which is, which Paradox Mon are you most excited to use, and which Paradox Mon are you least excited to face? Uh, I already know that a lot of people complain about Fluttermane, but I actually don't think it's going to be as busted as you think, so yeah, let's get into it. Let's start off with uh, Fluttermane, because that's like the most obvious one. Fluttermane is known for running a few items, Sash, Booster Energy, sometimes Choice Specs if you're crazy. Um, but Booster Energy is like the best item for it. And the way that these mons work is if Sunny Day is active or their Booster Energy is consumed, they get a 1.3 times multiplier in their highest stat. 1.5 specifically if it's speed. So basically it's like... Um, I don't know. So here, here's like the equivalent, right? A life orb is 1.3 times damage. So basically it's like uh, they get a life orb boost to their highest stat, um, you know, offensively. They get like, you know, a, an equivalent boost to their defenses if that's their highest stat. And then for like speed, they get like a choice scarf. Like that's how you have to think about it, um, which I think is actually fine. But uh, Fluttermane is like one of the scariest Pokemon to face with this <clears throat> because booster energy with uh, timid max speed actually makes it faster than max speed Regieleki. And Re Regieleki isn't in the game, obviously, but this is like a good comparison as to how fast we're getting. So Regieleki hits 277 speed. Uh, Fluttermane, 205 times 1.5. That's like, what, 302 or 307, uh, which is a very high speed stat. Uh, and it also gets access to Icy Wind. So it is able to do like Regieleki things. Typically, you see like, Sometimes they'll run like Protect on them, but I think that if you're running Icy Wind, you don't run Protect and you run like Shadow Ball, uh, Moon Blast, and possibly Dazzling Gleam. And like the last move is like up to your discretion, Mystical Fire, um, da I already said Dazzling Gleam, Mystical Fire, Parish Song, there's a few options. Uh, Fluttermane will definitely speed up the pace of the game as it is technically an answer to Don Dozo under certain situations uh, because it can run the Booster Energy Modest and it's like a natural Pokemon that outspeeds Dozo. Uh, it increases the damage that you can just deal to this guy. Also, like, here's a set that I like to run. Calm Mind plus Dazzling Gleam is actually really funny because it allows you to uh, Terra Fairy. And then once you Terra Fairy, uh, you're able to, like, KO basically everything with plus one uh, adaptability. Um, yeah, plus one adaptability uh, Dazzling Gleam. So it's, like, a really scary Pokemon. Obviously, the introduction of Fluttermane and, like, the Paradox Pokemon will lead to an increase of Torkoal because Torkoal is going to be the main way that you're able to activate these guys' abilities without having to use a booster energy since you only get one per team uh, with Drought. So Torkoal stocks are going to go up, but in response to that, obviously, we're going to have Pelipper stocks go up because there's a way to deal with uh, Sun teams. Uh, and also, we're going to have... Tyranitar or Hippodon stocks go up because uh, they're also in opposing weather. I don't know about I don't know about uh, Obama Snow. I think the metagame just becomes more hostile to it thanks to Pokemon having you know benefits from having Torkoal on the field. So Obama Snow doesn't like having to face as many Torkoals. Maybe like Terra Water Obama Snow will pick up because that's like a thing that you can do to beat Torkoal. 
Uh, but also something to note is Pin Kirchen is our only electric terrain setter. So that would be the activation for the other Paradox Mons, the uh, future Mons. So keep that in mind. Uh, but yeah, Flundermane, very good. Great Tusk, I actually think is going to be pretty decent. I think Iron Treads might be better though. Uh, but Great Tusk is pretty good in the fact that it is a ground fighting type. That's a type we haven't had before. Um, and it gets a Life Orb off of Booster Energy. Uh, you could also run like an Assault Vest on this guy. I made a whole video about him, but I don't find him to be all that important to the metagame. Um, does he get high horsepower? He doesn't. He has to run Earthquake. So yeah, like Close Combat, Earthquake. Uh, I actually think Rock Tomb is pretty decent. That's like a speed control option. And then like your final move can be like up to your discretion. I think that uh, Terra Blast is quite good because you'll be able to uh, switch out your typing to something that might help you out a bit. Like maybe Steel is actually pretty decent uh, since it helps you beat like fairies like Fluttermane. Actually, that's pretty good. Like Assault Vest, Terra Steel plus Terra Blast. Does he get Iron Head? He does get Iron Head, so you could actually just run Iron Head instead. But yeah, that's pretty decent. I'm pretty excited for Slitherwing. Oh, also Great Tusk gets the benefit of in the sun, it takes like half damage from water moves. Uh, Slitherwing's pretty interesting. Uh, it has like really high attack. 135 is pretty big, and it's also like a first impression user. I actually think it's our strongest first impression user if you account for Stab. Uh, so that's pretty scary. I don't know how fast you're gonna want to run it. I kind of wish this guy got Dragon Dance, uh, but it doesn't, even though he like looks like a dragon. Uh, but yeah, I think like first impression's pretty good. You could also go for like a bulk up set. Uh, does he get Swords Dance? He doesn't get Swords Dance. But yeah, I think that like bulk up, booster energy, um, flame charge could be interesting because you get that boost from the sun, obviously, uh, with the flame charge, uh, and then like. Leech Life and Close Combat, or does it get Drain Punch? It does get Drain Punch. What other fighting moves does it get? Nothing all that great. It probably will have to be Close Combat, which kind of sucks for the bulk up. But yeah, uh, I think this guy could be pretty scary. I don't know how good he's going to end up being. Can it reach the 143 speed tier? Because that's pretty important. Yeah, it can. So you can actually do something like this, right? Um, you hit like 143. And depending on like what you want to Oko with like standard close combat, you like calc for that and then the rest would go into bulk. So you could do like this uh, and that makes it like a fairly bulky Pokemon. You can even like make it like an even HP stat and give it like a Citrus Berry instead to give it a little bit more bulk uh, or even like leftovers and like give it like a, an HP stat ending in nine for optimal recovery. So like that's a thing that you could do. Roaring Moon is arguably like the second or third best uh, Paradox Mon. It's really scary because it's able to do this, right? So Booster Energy, Terra Flying, Acrobatics is one of the scariest things that you could face in this game. Um, let me see, can you run Jolly? Yes, okay. So its attack stat is always going to be higher than its speed stat with perfect IVs. So this guy gets a life or boost onto acrobatics, which gets a stab boost because of flying. And then he also keeps um, crunch or jaw lock. Jaw lock is actually probably a little bit better since, or actually no, because you don't, you don't want to prevent the user from switching out. So like you keep crunch, uh, does it get throat chop? Throat chop is pretty huge because now you're able to stop Sylveon from KOing you in like one hit. Uh, earthquake and like protect. You can even run dragon dance if you're crazy. Uh, does it get Tailwind? He does get Tailwind too. Like, this is another Tailwind user that's actually fairly fast, so it could actually pick up on this guy. He's a really scary Pokemon. He has pretty bad defense, but, like, his HP stat makes up for it. It's really bulky. I actually think this is going to be meta-defining, uh, especially if uh, people start running, like, bulkier sets to beat Fluttermane after Terra. It's like, that's really cool. Also, if you just get, like, a speed boost off of... Um, if, if, like, your opponent doesn't have, like, booster energy, then you get, like, a speed boost. Like, that's pretty big. Root Bonnet. This is actually a really cool Pokemon uh, that I very much enjoy running this set. <laughs> so Brute Bonnet hits 107 with max speed, and it also is like a really decent attack set at 127. Not even decent, it's just good. It has a good attack set at 127. So you could totally run like this. You could run like Focus Sash, Seed Bomb, Spore, uh, Sucker Punch, and I don't know, Protect. It even gets close combat, which is pretty funny. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a really crazy Pokemon. Clear Smog is even an option for beating like Don Dozo. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, this set's really scary with Tailwind, uh, because if you pair it with like a, a Murkrow, you're now outspeeding Dragapult, which is something that the original uh, Amoongus can't do. And also it's just like a scary Pokemon, right? You can give it like a booster energy and like, it'll start picking up KOs at plus one because it has 127 base attack. 
Uh, I actually looked into it. <laughs> you can't get a speed boost on on this guy uh, with your booster energy. The reason it has 127 attack specifically is because it's one point away from like doing this. Like if you run like timid, <laughs> if you run like timid um, and like decrease the attack all the way, it's 118. They specifically made this guy. So he always has one point higher than its uh, speed. So you can't do like a, a basically a built-in choice scarf with booster energy. But I see this guy actually being really good after like the metagame picks up and people start experimenting more because it was overlooked at the beginning of the pre-format uh, tournaments, but like it picked up towards the end. Screamtail. This Pokemon on paper seems awful. It's like a weird, fast, bulky Pokemon, but honestly, it's able to use all these things uh, to great effect. So the way that you would usually run it is it's actually a trick room setter and you can give it like uh, leftovers. You give it Perish Song as like another option. Um, and like the rest is like, it, it depends, right? It depends how you want to run it. Thunder Wave was a thing that you could do. You definitely want like an attacking move uh, and this thing has like equal attack and special attack, but not Moonblast. Uh, Dazzling Gleam was like usually the option that you would run. Uh, Encore is another like really good move. Like this is like a really solid like this is a really solid like move set, right? You only need like enough speed to outspeed a few things. You don't even like need speed. You just naturally outspeed a lot of things at like base uh, 111. Uh, for reference, I'm pretty sure that's like the same as Tornadus. Yeah, this thing is Tornadus speed for some reason. I have don't ask me why, uh, but yeah, Screamtail is quite good. It's very difficult to KO with 115 uh, HP and like really really good defenses. It sort of reminds me of Cresselia in that sense. Uh, where Cresselia had like 120, 120, 120. This thing's like a fast Cresselia. So yeah, does it get Icy Wind? No Icy Wind. Uh, so that's one thing it can't do. Honestly, if it had like better speed control or any speed control, it'd be a really scary Pokemon, but it's like stuck with sand or it's stuck with a uh, rock tomb, if anything. I think this actually would be like a really nice Pokemon um, in the format. Uh, it'll probably see like a lot of usage next to Gothitelle and Parish Trap. Sandy Shocks, I actually find to be pretty bad. Electric Ground is just Stunfisk typing, which isn't the best, and it's like faster than Charizard and bulky, so maybe it can do something with like, let me see. Yeah, yeah, maybe it could do something with like booster energy and just be like a generally good like attack Pokemon. It gets like Earth Power, it gets Thunderbolt. Uh, does it get Electro Web? If it got Electro, it would be like a little bit more usable. This thing is pretty decent in Down Dozo because we actually have like a decent electric type now. Um, but it, it, it feels confused. It feels like it doesn't know what it wants to be. And it might see some usage, to be honest. It might see some usage, but I feel like it gets outclassed by other electric types like Iron Hands, even though it's like a physical attacker, uh, and this thing's like a special attacker. But it, it also does like, it isn't immune to like Earthquake. So like Rotom out, out performs it in that sense. But it is like a cool Pokemon. I can actually see this possibly being like an Assault Vest user. Yeah. I can see this maybe being a salt best user, now that I think about it. Could be good. Probably not, though. Iron Bundle is actually really scary. This guy's, like, always going to run booster energy, because it's one point faster than Fluttermane. So you can just do this. Yeah. You run like this with Icy Wind, and you Icy Wind the Fluttermane, and now the Fluttermane uh, loses its booster energy plus one, basically. Uh, and now Pokemon that outspeed Fluttermane, like Dragapult, are able to KO it in one hit. So Iron Bundle plus Dragapult was a thing you would see sometimes. Uh, but what's really scary is Freeze Dry and the fact that this thing has one or 124 base special attack and 136 speed. Nothing is safe versus Iron Bundle. I've even seen like Life Orb Iron Bundle just pick up crazy KOs. Uh, Blizzard, Hydro Pump is like the last two moves. And yeah, uh, you would actually maybe drop Icy Wind at that point. But like, I, I, I think that like this guy's really scary. Actually, like probably just protect here. Because um, it has... 56 HP and 114 defense too. On the special side, it's like super frail, but we don't have like good special priority moves other than Vacuum Wave, and that isn't super common. So like ways of dealing with Iron Bundle outside of Trick Room are pretty few and far between. That's like really scary. Uh, and also, this is like a decent hail Pokemon. Once it gets snow up, sorry, not hail, yeah, snow. Once it gets snow up, it's actually really bulky and hard to KO with uh, super effective fighting moves. Uh, are physical fighting moves. So it, it's like a really crazy Pokemon. It's also technically a counter to, um, was it? it? It beats, what's it called? 
It beats Fluttermane, we talked about that, but it also beats uh, Roaring Moon because of its like ice typing. It beats like every set that it wants to run other than Terra Fire, but even then it can land a Hydro Pump. Like this thing's biggest weakness is the fact that it's usually locked to running uh, Freeze Dry and it can't, it doesn't get like any better water move than Hydro Pump. Like on the water side of things, special attacks, cause that's like your actual attack set that you're using. Yeah, uh, you have Chilling Water, Hydro Pump, Water Pulse, Whirlpool. You're running Hydro Pump. And that 80 accuracy is actually like the one thing keeping this guy from being super, super broken. Iron Hands. A lot of people told me Iron Hands is better than um, Hariyama, but I, I've never been sold on that. And that's for a few reasons. Iron Hands is straight up offensive. Like where Hariyama has support tools with like Faint and, um, and Knock Off where this guy doesn't have it. That being said, Iron Hands is still very good. Uh, I've seen sets like this. Uh, you basically run this guy as like a Trick Room Attacker. Boost your energy to boost that attack stat. And just run like this. Brave, zero speed. Wild Charge, Drain Punch or Close Combat. Actually, if you're running like the booster energy set, you run Close Combat. Fake Out, and then your last move is basically whatever. I think Ice Punch was pretty common. Uh, but yeah, that's like the offensive variant. But the other variant that's pretty scary is the Assault Vest variant. Because we actually run is uh, Thunder Punch, Drain Punch, Fake Out Ice Punch. Um, or even just some other like final move. I don't know like what the last move would be on this set. But yeah, uh, this actually makes it like really difficult to KO too. Because it has 154 HP, 108 defense. On the physical side, you're not KOing it with like Earthquake. It can like eat an Earthquake from Garchomp and then KO it back with uh, 140 attack Ice Punch. So the way that they would like build these guys is actually like pretty special defensive because the assault vest will allow it to like eat hits. Uh, yeah, like it was it was a crazy Pokemon uh, pre-format. So I expect it to be just as good. I just don't think it's like actually like I feel like it's hard to compare this guy and Hariyama because Hariyama definitely takes a more support role than this dude. Iron Jugulus, I would argue, is among the worst of the Paradox Pokemon, even though it has 108 speed and 122 special attack, it's mainly just the fact that like Dark Flying isn't better than Dark Dragon and Hydreigon just feels better, right? Does this guy get Draco Meteor? No, it's it's Draco Meteor is like the big thing. That being said, this guy does get like Tailwind, Dark Pulse. He doesn't get Nasty Plot, which is like really bad, uh, but he does get like Hurricane and like Heat Wave. Like it, it, you, you run Hydreigon over this guy. I could see this maybe having a niche on some teams with like Stab Hurricane. Yeah, H Hydreigon's just like generally better. I guess this guy does get knockoff. Maybe like an Assault Vest variant could be decent. Iron Moth is actually pretty scary on paper, but it isn't that great in practice in my opinion. Uh, it loses to Garchomp unless you're running like some kind of Terra typing that beats it. Uh, I guess, oh, it doesn't get Giga Drain. So no, like... Yeah, okay, so like if you're gonna run Iron Moth, I highly recommend you actually run Volcarona instead because Volcarona also has the option of running like Flame Body and um, and Rocky Helmet with like Rage Powder, where this thing doesn't get like Rage Powder. Uh, it's mainly just an attacker. Like you run like Heat Wave and it doesn't get Sludge Bomb either. It's Sludge Wave, so you have to hit your partner. That's like the big thing. Does it get Thunderbolt? It doesn't get Thunderbolt, it gets Discharge. It like only gets spread moves. Like you would run this thing on sun with Torkoal. Actually, you could do this. You could do like a life orb and then, oh no, you can't because it gets like the cork drive boost. Never mind. Yeah, no, you do have to run like booster energy then. I forgot. It's not the fire. It's It doesn't get like the boost from the sun because it's uh it's actually the electric terrain variant. Yeah, um, I think this guy's actually pretty bad, <laughs> to be honest. I, I'm sure someone will make it work. It'll probably be like on one or two like really cool teams, but uh, in practice, it isn't actually that great. So I find it quite underwhelming. It also like loses to like real Tyranitar, but speaking of real Tyranitar, here we have fake Tyranitar. Uh, this guy's also pretty underwhelming. I guess things that it has over Tyranitar. Uh, Wild Charge is pretty cool. Probably still gonna have to run Stone Edge. Still gets Dragon Dance. This is basically just like Tyranitar with Wild Charge um, and no sand. Regular Tyranitar is just like explicitly better. And I guess you could run like booster energy. Like that's a thing. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't see it being that great. Iron Treads is actually pretty cool. Uh, I think this is also going to be like another Assault Vest Pokemon. Uh, or even like a Life Orb Attacker. Because 106 speed is really good. You're outspeeding uh, 105s. Which means that you outspeed Pomot. Uh, you outspeed 
uh, Garchomp. And that's like the big gatekeeper, to be honest, when it comes to speed tiers right now is Garchomp. So you could do like this, right? We're in like Assault Vest. Um, Iron Head. I wish this guy got Spin Out. Does he get Spin Out? No, he doesn't. Like Iron Head, Ice Spinner, uh, Earthquake, and like Knock Off or Rock Tomb. I think Rock Tomb's probably better. You can even run like a Life Orb set, and that's really scary. Or Booster Energy too. Booster Energy is probably like the better one. Uh, yeah, a very cool Pokemon. I enjoy him quite a bit. Because the Booster Energy, you then get the Speed Boost, which is actually pretty decent. Uh, but I guess if you want to run like Adamant, you know, now you get an Attack Boost. But yeah, very cool Pokemon. Iron Valiant, I actually see being really good now that we sort of, we, we figured out like different ways to like use it. I think Booster Energy is still like the best item. But yeah, it gets access to Spirit Break. Um, does it have to run Psycho Cut? I think Psycho Cut's like the best move that it gets. What what Psychic moves does it get? Oh wait, no, it's not even Psychic type. Never mind. Spirit Break Close Combat's like really good dual stab. Destiny Bond's actually like a really good move to have on this guy. Knockoff's like an extremely good utility move. Basically, this guy just gets like all the best moves in the game that a physical attacker wants. It even gets like Shadow Sneak, uh, Poison Jab, Low Kick. Ice Punch, Icy Wind, it gets like everything it needs. Uh, it's just a matter of like what team you put it on. It actually sometimes like would even want to be like a special attacker just because it's special move pool is pretty good. Um, Cause then you're able to run like Moonblast, Icy Wind. Does it get Ice Beam? Does it get Ice Beam? Moonblast, Icy Wind. Um, does, it get, does it get Aura Sphere? It does get Aura Sphere, which is pretty cool if you want to run like a fighting move. Um, and yeah, just like Protect. Really cool Pokemon. I find it uh, very interesting. I don't know how good it's going to be when things like uh, Fluttermane and uh, what is it called? Roaring Moon exist, which both outspeed it and can one shot it with like Terra Flying Acrobatics or just like a regular like Moonblast from Fluttermane because it's very frail on the special side. Uh, so it, it's very dependent on that. So yeah. Other notes, obviously, like I explained that. Um, you know, Pinkurchin and the weather Pokemon have more usage now. But yeah, uh, honestly, it's hard to predict just how much this will impact the metagame going forward. Uh, because while we did have like a preview of it before the format started, the way that we look at our tools and the way that we build our teams has heavily shifted. And we just kind of need to, we kind of have to learn it again. You know, that's my opinion. I'm, I'm not going to make any like super, super like crazy calls on like what's going to be great or bad. I'm just talking about things that we're, we pretty much already know. So yeah, if you guys enjoy, leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and I'll see you guys in the next one.